Welcome to Trout Towns, the show where I take you to some of the best towns across America for trout fishing. Each episode, we'll travel to a new town to fish two specific trout streams, from freestone to limestone to tailwater and everything in between. We'll also highlight some of the great American history as well as architecture illustrated by the towns which we visit. All that and more today on Trout Towns. On this episode of Trout Towns, we're in Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania, your gateway to some of the best trout fishing in the Poconos Mountains. Our first stop on this trip will be to the mighty Lehigh River, a large and rugged tailwater fishery brimming with stocked rainbow trout. We'll then explore one of the Lehigh's most productive freestone tributary streams loaded with wild, naturally reproducing brown trout. While in town, we'll briefly highlight some of Jim Thorpe's rich historical past, starting out as a coal mining, canal, and then railroad hub Finally, transitioning into the recreational tourist mecca it's become today. Lastly, we'll showcase some of the well-preserved European-inspired architecture, which have led some to call Jim Thorpe the Switzerland of America. Please join me today as we fish, explore, and embrace our very first trout town in Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania. Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania, located in Carbon County in the northeastern region of the state, flanked to the north by the Poconos Mountains and the south by Blue Mountain. Located in a mountainous region with its principal waterway being the Lehigh River, the town of Jim Thorpe, originally founded as Ma Chunk in 1818, was set up as a company town, extracting the abundant natural resources located in the area. Following the discovery of anthracite coal in 1791, the Lehigh Coal and Navigation Company laid out the site and there built the first industrial railroad in the United States, including, in 1828, a gravity switchback line that hauled coal to the Lehigh Canal. This coal would eventually end up in the Delaware River and be utilized by destinations up and down the eastern United States. One notable resident of Jim Thorpe from our industrial past is Asa Packer, a coal baron who founded the Lehigh Valley Railroad to replace the canal in 1855. You can still tour his immaculately built Italianate mansion to this day. Wow, we really used to make impressive things in this country. Throughout the 1800s, Jim Thorpe was a coal shipping center as well as lumbering hub, with both industries relying on canals and the Lehigh and Susquehanna Railroad to promote economic growth and prosperity. As coal mining and lumber extraction decreased in the early to mid 20th century, tourism became the borough's economic mainstay, and in the early 1950s, in an effort to attract business to Ma Chunk, formally it changed its name to Jim Thorpe. Jim Thorpe. The man and the legend was known for winning two gold medals in the 1912 Summer Olympics, specifically in the pentathlon and the decathlon. Also, he was known as one of the most versatile athletes in the United States history, playing professional football, baseball, and basketball. Well known for its well-preserved historic district and beautiful buildings, Jim Thorpe is a gateway to the Poconos outdoor recreation areas and the Lehigh Gorge more specifically, with activities such as whitewater rafting, hiking, cycling, and of course fishing, just to name a few, there are also excellent shopping opportunities at small family-owned businesses and delicious meals at inventive restaurants. With all that brief history provided, let's go fishing on the mighty Lehigh River. Alright, so after about a three quarter of a mile uh, walk on this wonderful rail trail from downtown historic Jim Thorpe, we are just now making our way to the Lehigh River where we will be fly fishing for the next few hours. So the Lehigh today looks to be at a lower water level than it normally is, which is great because the Lehigh River is notoriously slippery, the rocks, and uh, as far as bodies of water that have some natural reproduction of trout. Aside from maybe the west branch of the Delaware River, this is one of the largest bodies of water um, that you'll be trout fishing in Pennsylvania. I guess like parts of Pine Creek are pretty big as well as, you know, like the Yakagani and a few others. But for me at least, I'm always very cautious when I'm wading uh, because there are some deep holes. The water is pretty tannic uh, from the uh, acid, uh, acidic soils in this area. But uh, yeah, we're just getting down to the Lehigh. Really excited to get started fishing today. Unlike some other trout towns where you have to drive maybe 15, 20, 30 minutes away from the downtown historic core, uh, the Lehigh is literally steps away from Jim Thorpe. So we're starting out with just a uh, black woolly bugger, little orange indicator. 
Going very generic to start out, just to start probing this water. Got a nice little set of riffles. A uh, calm little pocket of water right here. So that's basically what we're doing. See if we can catch a uh, catch a trout. All right, just got our first fish. I think it's a uh, stocked rainbow. Hit the black woolly bugger. Drifting through this nice little set of uh, riffles here. Again, water's relatively low for the Lehigh, but definitely fishable. See if we can get this guy over here. Feels pretty good. Definitely feels like a decent stalker. Walking him over to the shallow water. Oh, he's fighting. Oh, he's trying to run. I think we have on 5X, 5X tippet or something like that. Oh, he's, he's really fighting. I got to give him a little line back. Although I'm not a big fan of stock rainbows, they do fight quite hard. Don't worry, bud. We're gonna catch and release you, don't worry. See if we can get him in the net. Oh, oh, got him. All right, yeah, so that's kind of your run of the mill stock stalker, but that's great. First fish of the day on the Lehigh River, so let's get him to the bank, get the hook out of him, take a look at him, and get him back in the water. So let's take a look at this beautiful, really plump. I'm almost thinking this is a uh, female, perhaps. I know rainbows spawn in the springtime, uh, dissimilar to native brook trout and wild brown trout, which spawn in the fall. Uh, definitely a chunky, healthy fish. So let's uh, let's take a look at him quick. Oh, good looking fish. Oh, all right, that was a terrible release. I apologize about that. The fish is fine. She's right there. She's out of here. Not a great release, but that's okay. So. We got our first stocked rainbow trout, a plump, presumably female. Uh, so let's uh, let's keep fishing. So as I continue to drift this black woolly bugger through some really nice, deeper, riffly water, just a personal anecdote on that footbridge right there, which is, I forget the specific name, but it's a rail trail of some kind, which uh, you can get on right at Jim Thorpe. I proposed to my then girlfriend, now wife, uh, almost, I wanna say four or five years ago now, um, so, I mean, time flies when you're happily married, am I right, guys? Um, but yeah, proposed right there. Really glad I didn't accidentally drop the ring. So coming around this corner, we have a male and female mallard. We also have a single goose. I'm really hoping I don't spook them into the next section of riffles I'm planning to fish. Oftentimes when you have waterfowl in the water ahead of you, you inadvertently scare them forward and they pretty much ruin the next uh set of riffles you were planning to fish so i'm trying to head them off by going left keeping them on my right so they don't go forward and exactly what i wanted to avoid please keep going please keep going please keep going all right excellent they went past where i want to fish this goose is making a good decision going right thank you goose and as you can see up through here in this little side channel, the main stem of the Lehigh's on my right, this little side channel has a nice little set of riffles. I'm probably gonna get snagged on the bottom with my size eight black woolly bugger, but that's okay. Fighting pretty hard. This is definitely bigger than the last guy. Can't really see him. Ooh. Yeah, this is a pretty good fish. Got him. All right. Yeah, this is definitely a good sized fish. Let's get the freaking hook at him. 
Ooh, dude, I don't know if you can see it. Look at the colors on this fish. Wow. Beautiful, beautiful colors. Probably about 14 inches, real chunky. Got him in these riffles. Let's get the hook at him, take a freaking look at him. All right, so I'm gonna say this is a holdover, at least one year holding over in the Lehigh River. The colors on this fish are wonderful. If you look at the really pink cheeks, about probably 13, 14 inch size fish. This is a great fish. So we just got the hook out of him. We're taking a look at him. Now we're gonna get him right out of here. Awesome. Oh, all right. Well, not a great release. I was grabbing his tail and he, he just plopped out of the net. That's okay, that's okay. Handless, handless release. That's really what we shoot for. So apologies we didn't get a better look at him. That's okay. Second, stocked rainbow of the day. Got him in this nice little side section. Wonderful riffles. Let's keep fishing. All right, so we left the little side section behind where we got that uh, really nice holdover stocked rainbow trout. Um, we're back out to the main stem of the Lehigh. As you can see, it's relatively f flat. F f f it's relatively flat and featureless in here. Uh, there are some good riffles hundreds of yards up. I really don't want to have to trudge through these slippery rocks and water to get there. So what we're going to do, head back to the car, drive to another section of the Lehigh, continue fly fishing. All right, so we came about one or two miles deeper into the Lehigh Gorge. We have the Lehigh River looking real beautiful down there. We're going to push in maybe a couple hundred yards, find some nice riffles to target, and if we could catch maybe one or two more fish, we'll call it a day here on the Lehigh River. We just got a fish. No idea where it's at. I'm in this big ass water here. Let's see what we got. If I can get it over here. Ooh, hoo, hoo. that seems like a decent fish. Seems like a decent fish. Nice rainbow. Oh, damn. Oh, really hope I land this guy. Got him. All right. All right, nice sized uh, st stocked rainbow trout. Let's uh, get the hook at him and take a freaking look at him. That's awesome. Just got a pretty cookie cutter, standard, probably 12, 13 inch stocked rainbow trout. Got him in some really hairy water over here. I didn't even have uh, didn't even have a chance to, to set the hook. Um, but anyway. All right, we're gonna get this guy right out of here. Hold on, bud, hold on. We'll get you out of here. We'll get you out of here, bud, hold on. Hold on, hold on. This fish really does not wanna be in this situation. Hold on. With a lot of white water ahead of me and three stocked rainbow trout all caught on black woolly buggers, I think we're gonna leave the Lehigh River behind. After a great half day fishing the Lehigh River, we're gonna head back to Jim Thorpe right now. Highlighting various European architectural styles, the Jim Thorpe that we see today was primarily built during the 19th century. These buildings were constructed within the context of a rapidly industrializing and an economically expanding United States with a level of impressive civic and architectural pride which I envy today. In such a relatively small geographic area, architectural styles include Federalist, Greek Revival, Second Empire, Romanesque Revival, Queen Anne, and Richardsonian Romanesque. 
The old Machunk Historic District is teeming with dozens and dozens of well-preserved buildings, and there's a few we'd like to highlight before our architectural walking tour. Here we have the Carbon County Courthouse, built in the 1890s. This grand building's exterior was based on the Romanesque architectural revival style and is constructed with local sandstone. Two of the more impressive residential properties include the Asa Packer and Harry Packer Mansions, both built in the Italianate style and now on the National Register of Historic Places list. Here we have the Central Railroad of New Jersey Station in Jim Thorpe. This one and a half story red brick building in the Queen Anne style featuring a three and a half story cylindrical corner tower with a cylindrical roof is now owned and operated by the Lehigh Gorge Scenic Railway and serves as its visitor center. St. Mark's Episcopal Church, built in the late 1860s, was constructed with money from local millionaires in the coal and railroad industries and is a religious stalwart noted for its Gothic revival style architecture. Rounding out our architectural highlights are the Machunk Jailhouse, Machunk Opera House, and Dimmick Memorial Library. Now, if you'll just indulge me for a minute or two, let's go on an architectural walking tour of Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania, and then we'll get back to catching some nice trout. Here we are back in the Lehigh Gorge fishing one of my favorite freestone tributaries of the Lehigh River. There are several, many uh, freestone streams that feed into the Lehigh, in and around the Lehigh Gorge area. Uh, this by far is one of the most productive. Uh, it is pretty overcast, quite cool in the low 50s today, a uh, little windy. Water levels are slightly lower than average for this time of year, early spring, but we're gonna do our best. We do have our fly rod, small indicator, little teeny tiny Prince Nymph, and we're just gonna see what happens. Um, I am seeing some uh, hatching insects, not very many. I don't think we're gonna be able to dry fly fish today, unfortunately, but we are gonna push up for a couple hours and see what we can do. Alright, just got our first fish. Hit the BWO. Not sure what it is. Might be a wild brown. Yeah, that's a wild brown right there. Ooh, and we got him. Oh, nope, nope, nope. Almost had him. Ooh, got him. Alright, so. Hit the BWO, just got a solid, probably six, seven, six, seven inch wild brown, beautiful. So let's uh, get the hook at him, take a look at him. All right, so relatively early on, we just got a beautiful, absolutely beautiful and feisty uh, wild brown trout here. Hit the small size 18 or 20 BWO. Let's uh, try to get a look at him here. Beautiful fish, absolutely beautiful. Let's get him right out of here. Let's get him right out of here. Beautiful fish, beautiful fish. Let's get him out of here. See you later, bud. Awesome. 
All right, we just got our second fish. He's running. He's running. Feels like a decent fish, honestly. Maybe he's just fighting hard, who knows. Yeah, he's got me pinned down a little bit and he's pulling some drag. Again, I don't know if that's just the current or if this is just a bigger, nicer fish, who knows. Feels pretty good though. Feels better than the last one. Ooh, yeah, that's a that's a good looking wild brown. Holy, holy cow. Not huge, but definitely bigger than the last one, for sure. Ooh, there he is. That is a beaut. Beaut, beaut, beaut. Ooh. Oh. Got him. Oh. Wow. Holy cow. All right, so in this same hole, back to back, this is one of the prettiest wild browns i've probably ever seen exquisite exquisite red colors and it's spring so it's not even like spawning season so that's that's wonderful let's get the hook out of them take a look at them look at that wow all right so we just got an absolutely gorgeous i'm gonna say 10 11 inch wild brown just with absolutely stunning red red spots on them let's take a look at them all wild here Ooh, man that's a good fish that's a great fish let's get them out of here Oh, got him. Got him. He slapped it. Oh, hit the tan caddis. Seems like a deal. Oh, son of a gun. Well, he popped off. Damn. All right, so the tan caddis just got slapped. But uh, yeah, he, he popped off the hook. That's, that's not what you want. But at least we know they'll hit the tan caddis. So that's, I mean, that's good. Yeah, definitely lost him now. Damn it. Got one, got one, little guy. Hit the uh, hit the dry. Hopefully we can land this one. Yep, just a little brownie. Not even gonna net this one. He's very small, but we appreciate that he hit the uh, tan caddis. Very small. Just quick, take a look at him. Get him right out of here. Wet my hands. Hands are sopping wet. All right, nice little, nice little guy, nothing crazy. So let's get the hook out of him, get him out of here. All right, so we just landed our third fish, little teeny tiny wild brown, but we'll take it. We definitely haven't been on the board for like an hour or so, so we will definitely take it. Got this really nice stretch of water right here. Just got on another fish here. Looks like another wild brown. Not too big, but he's taking me on a little bit of a ride. Whew, these rocks are so slippery, dude. Try to get him over here. Oh! Jeepers. Oh, he's decent. He's all right. He's all right. Let's get him in the net. Oh, got him. All right, so that's a solid like seven, eight inch wild brown. Got him in this nice little hole here still on the tan caddis. So that's wonderful. So we just got another beautiful stream bred Poconos Mountains wild brown trout. This guy might be like the second best of the day of four. Let's take a look at him. Beautiful fish. Absolutely beautiful. Woo.
try to land this one. We just missed one a little bit earlier. So I'm hoping we can land this one successfully. Yep, that's like a seven, eight, nine inch wild brown. Pretty solid. Let's see if we can get him in the net here. Oh. This will be our first if we can land him. First fish on the bugger. <clears throat> Got him. All right, yeah, nice seven, eight inch wild brown. That's excellent. Let's get this uh, black woolly bugger right out of him. Get the hook out of him. Take a look at him. All right, so we just got another quality, quality, medium size wild brown trout. Let's take a look at him quick. Get him right back in the water. Reviving him in the net, wetting our hands. Beautiful colors. Nice, nice size fish. Let's get him out of here. All right, so that was wild brown number five. Oh, got him. Nice one. Ooh, nice one. At least it feels good. Ooh, he's pulling some drag. Dang. It might be the current or it might be a big fish. I honestly don't know. But really, I'm not moving him too much. Uh, I think he's okay. I think he's pretty decent. He's fighting hard, though. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a decent-sized wild brown. I wouldn't say it's crazy. Crazy big, but definitely fighting hard. Just what you want. Oh. Trying to tire him out a little bit, but not too much. Oh, there he is. Let's get him in the net. Let's get him in the net. Oh, got him. All right. Yeah, it's actually uh, just a medium-sized wild brown, but he was fighting like crazy. So let's get the hook out of him. Take a freaking look at him. That's wild brown number six. Call me the mayor of brown town, right? All right. So this is probably the second best fish of the day, if I had to guess. Let's take a look at him here. Oh, yeah, definitely a solid fish. Probably 10 or so inches. Pretty nice. Honestly, very nice fish. Let's get him out of here. Got him. Oh, dang it. Oh, yeah, I got one. Thought we lost him for a second. We got one. Feels pretty good. Probably a small wild brown. Oh, oh, that's not bad. That's not bad. He's got some vigor. We like vigor here on this channel. Oh, another wild brown if my eyes are not deceiving me. Let's try to land this one. This is the last hole we said we were going to fish, so... Let's try to get this guy in the net. It actually seems pretty decent. Yeah, not bad, not bad. Probably about nine inch, nine inch wild brown. Hold on, bud, hold on. We'll get you out of here. Oh, got him. All right, yeah, solid eight or nine inch wild brown. Last fish on this beautiful free stoner. Let's get the hook at him, take a look at him, and get him out of here. All right, so we got another cookie cutter but solid. I'm gonna say eight, nine inch wild brown trout. The colors on this one aren't, aren't crazy, but that's okay, that's okay. Oh, nice fish, very nice, very solid. Very solid, let's get him out of here. See you later, bud. Get out of here. All right, so with that final wild brown trout caught, I think that put us at seven or eight today. We caught uh, wild browns on this beautiful freestone tributary of the Lehigh River near Jim Thorpe in the Lehigh Gorge State Park area. Um, had a wonderful time. I think that's all we got for today, so thank you for watching. From all of us here at Trout Town, and by all of us, I sadly just mean myself, we'd like to thank you for watching today's episode. If you have any other Trout Towns you'd like me to visit, please drop me a comment in the comments section of this video. Also, if you enjoyed this video and would like to see me visit other Trout Towns across this great country, please consider subscribing to the Traveling Trout Co. channel to give my life meaning. Also, go ahead and tap that like button. Just give it a tap. Trap Town, brought to you by Traveling Trap Co., a company that's not really a company in any meaningful or significant way. Stay trappy, folks.